I'm Judd Tully, the editor-at-large of Art in Auction magazine and Blue In Art Info. We're inside the 12th edition of Art Basel Miami Beach. Today we're going a bit off the track. We're not hunting blue chip artists, but perhaps blue chip artists of the future. We're at New York's Mnuchin Gallery amidst a group of post-war classic blue chip art from Robert Ryman to Willem de Kooning. A lesser known artist is directly just over my shoulder, a work on paper by David Hammonds and it's untitled, parenthetically called Kool-Aid. It has all kinds of markings on it, stamps. It's priced at $325,000. In the scheme of things at Art Basel Miami Beach, that's not a particularly high figure, but it's interesting to know that a Hammond sculpture recently sold in New York at Phillips for a record $8 million and became instantly the most expensive work ever sold by an African-American artist. David Hammonds is one of the most, amongst younger artists, admired and looked up to figures in the contemporary art world. We're in uh, New York's Mitchell Innocent Nash Gallery and I'm literally standing on a sculpture by the New York artist Virginia Overton and this is a piece that she made specifically for the fair and there's another sculpture behind me. She works a lot with found objects, local materials. Can you talk a little bit about first this piece and then this installed would it be an installation piece? I sort of consider everything I do sculpture. Some of them are more installation based or feel that way. They change size and shape depending on where I am. But the piece on the wall came from the studio. I make a lot of things in the studio when I'm trying out ideas and I have a lot of materials that I just use and trade out and maybe they're a sculpture for a day in the studio but then I'll take it apart and make something else. So some things get out of the studio and other things don't but there's always sort of a, a stockpile of odds and ends there that I work with. And I, I understand you source the wood locally from a lumber yard here? The wood that mm -hmm. um, it makes up the floor is from a, a lumber yard here called Shell, I think. What's nice for me is to find the material close by. Uh, one, to cut down on just, you know, transportation and things like that, sure. but also uh, to to work within the community I'm in to a certain degree as much as I can. So when I go to a place, I like to work with the local suppliers or craftsmen. You know, it really informs the way that a work turns out. I know you're not the art dealer, you are the artist, but yes. is this for sale, the floor? It is, yeah, for, for the right person. I think um, it would be, you know, be a nice sculpture uh, to have. Who that person is, is yet to be seen. I'm standing in front of a new work, a very large five-panel piece by the Brooklyn artist Hugh Scott Douglas, 26-year-old artist, and this is an untitled work. It's a, called a dye sublimation print on linen. It's a magnified image of a five-euro note and according to the background of this piece it involves moving of money, sort of money laundering, issues of uh, drug cartels and using, uh, not using banks in other words, to transfer large amounts of funds. This is something the artist is interested in, is sort of like an underlayer of society. And this work um, sold to a Montreal collector uh, for $90,000. And one of the special attributes of this fair and what everyone seems to be hunting for is to find a young, exciting artist to add to their collection.